Thank you. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. A lot of exciting conversations today. Uh, what I want to share with you in the next few minutes is about some idea of how to cool the desert or how to cool a very hot place such as Dubai. Well, this is not the way to, to cool the desert, um, but uh, we can really think about new big piece of infrastructure that's needed in this part of the world, in other parts of the world, in order to tackle especially the climate crisis. Before that, I want to share with you, however, something that I think is a problem when we look at cities. When you look at cities and you talk to mayors, everybody want to wants to follow best practices. But if you think about it, that's really not what you want to do. A best practice means you look at another city who's done something 10 or 15 years before, then that thing was successful, and what do you do? You copy that. And you know, basically you're locking the future into the past. If we need to innovate and innovate fast, especially in the face of this, then we need a different way to, uh, to, to innovate in our cities and find ways to develop solutions that maybe haven't been tested yet, but can be the solution that change, that change the game. And uh, so the process is more like what happens in VC, in venture capital, is trying new ideas, test them, get feedback, and then iterate as fast as you can. And I want to share with you today an example of something we've been doing about the Sensible City Lab. Incidentally, we got a new lab here in Dubai. I know some of you came to visit us yesterday, and also at uh, our design office uh, when things became a, a piece of design. And I wanted to start with Helsinki. The reason is that Helsinki <clears throat> has exactly the opposite problem that there is in Dubai. You know, Helsinki is about heating the city in a sustainable way. In Dubai, it's how we can cool the city in a sustainable way. And Helsinki did something that was quite interesting a few years ago, which is not to look at best practices, but the mayor launched a challenge called the Helsinki Energy Challenge. <clears throat> the idea was to follow a process much more similar to what happens with the X Prize in the United States. So basically get ideas, solicit ideas from all over the world, put a big prize in the middle, and allow people to compete and then select some winners. Uh, it lasted two and a half years. Uh, the launch, 250 big consortia participated, 10 finalists, and the winners, and I'll show you now the project we did that won the competition uh, about heating Helsinki in a sustainable way. And then I'll tell you why then the same thing can be applied, the same approach can be applied for cooling instead of heating. Now, this was a consortium. The only thing I wanted to mention is when you do something like this, you really need to have many people around the table. When you do a piece of infrastructure, you know, becomes more and more systemic in the city. So many engineers, many big multinationals, and so on. So again, this was run by our design office in New York, but actually put it together a really transdisciplinary uh, team. I'll show you briefly the video. Can we have the, the video? We're excited to present to you the hot heart, an innovative solution to decarbonize Helsinki. Here is how we do it. So I will tell you a bit more about this uh, uh, in detail, and then we'll look at the applications for cooling. But you know, let's uh, go back to what you see in the thing today. There's good news and bad news, as you all know. The good news is what you see to the left. The good news is today, the price of renewables is going down very quickly. What you see here to the left is uh, the cost of wind, but solar is similar. So today, in this region, you can produce one megawatt hour, key measure of, uh, of power. You can produce it with anything between $10 to $30. 
So that's great news. The bad news is what you see to the left. As we all know, renewables are intermittent. And then, you know, if, you, if you've got too much wind, too little wind, so then prices go up and down. And that's a key problem. Well, you might say, so why don't we use batteries? Yes, great idea, but there is a financial cost. So we said one megawatt hour, 10 to $30. A battery for that megawatt hour to store it is 200,000 euros or dollars. So somehow, you know, batteries and the cost of batteries is not going down fast enough. So in this case, for heating the city, well, the idea was very simple. Given that in any case, you need to turn that power into heating, why don't we do that and store it and call it a thermal battery? So we store it as heat. And then when you do that, the cost is not 200,000 per megawatt hour, it's closer to $200 per megawatt hour. And then everything changes from an economic point of view. So that's how we want the competition. To the left, you put all the different energy sources. In the middle, you got a different, no, what we call the hot heart, the different thermal batteries that we're talking about, this kind of floating reservoirs. And then you plug this in into the energy system of the city. Very quickly, you get traditional benefits. You saw them, you get, you equalize the whole grid. It has a lot of value, especially as grids all over the world are getting you know, out of sync because of the increasing amount of renewable. And then you also get a beautiful place. In this case, you know, people were saying, what do you do on these kind of floating islands? You can do, sure, you know, billionaires' mansions, or you can do like a beautiful place for the cities, so like a park and forest and so on. Uh, I will not bore you with all the thinking about where to put it, uh, about the details of constructions in some of the images. Uh, with all of this, you can actually get all the energy for the city for one year. Some of the experience on the top I, I mentioned. As an engineer, as a civil engineer, I love to think, you know, the bicycle wheel is what is called a tensegrity structure. That's, you know, Buckminster Fuller, the great Buckminster Fuller actually studied that at the beginning. So this is done in a similar way. It's a very efficient way of using matter to create a very solid thing. So when you're doing this, you get, uh, in a nutshell, you get something that can be done by the end of the decade to decarbonize the, cool, the heating system of the city. You get uh, all the energy for one year for the city, 6,000 gigawatt hour that can be stored into that. The interesting thing at the beginning, we thought the cost for citizens would be higher. It turns out it's 10% lower. So the interesting thing, you get decarbonized heat at a lower price than today. The two bonuses I meant, and uh, you know, the cost is around 1 billion. It doesn't matter how much it is, but the point is returns are quite good. So you can actually fund it and, uh, and, and, get, uh, and leverage it and, uh, uh, and make it happen. So that was an example from a city that has exactly the opposite problem of Dubai. It is about heating in Helsinki, at least so far with climate. It was about heating during the winter months, during a long winter. But the same thing is what we are studying now in Dubai. Everything I said, just change heating with cooling. You know, instead of high temperature with low temperature, you just do it in a symmetrical way. And then, uh, you know, that's what we are now studying with uh, the government here uh, is a solution for district cooling. So anyway, this was a natural one to share with you some of the thinking, two things, probably two, two takeaways. The first one is what I said at the beginning about cities. When cities have to innovate, probably don't follow best practices. Helsinki didn't do that. Think more like X Prize Foundation, X Prize. And the second thing, how we can together think about a new piece of infrastructure, hopefully open to people. Now share with people, as we saw here in Helsinki, so that together we can see how to decarbonize our cities for cooling or for, sorry, for heating or for cooling. Thank you.